where I grew up, the life expectancy is such that at the age of 34, I'm already halfway through my life. That makes me very, very angry. The big problem that I've got is that that anger, which is a form of stress, and all of the things that I will do to try and nullify it or manage it, that is what shortens my life. So right at the core of me is a very obvious sense of injustice and a very, very difficult conundrum. There's the sense of what is right and wrong, and then there is what is. To understand the role that stress plays in communities such as the ones that I grew up in, where life expectancy is a lot lower than comparatively affluent communities, I want you all to imagine a playful visit to your dentist. We all know what it's like to go to the dentist. We wake up in the morning, it's on the periphery of our thought, I'm going to the dentist today. We get there, we're quite relaxed in the waiting room, maybe even giving ourselves a wee pat on the back. I'm unusually calm, it's just a dentist. If you're lucky to have a good dentist, they might come out, welcome you in this way, communicate very clearly with you what's about to happen, how much pain or discomfort you may experience, how long it's gonna take. Some may even have very conscientiously placed some sort of image above the dentist chair to distract you from that impending sense of doom and fear. But you're not feeling any of that. Some dentists may even have Jeremy Vine playing on the radio in the background, which for some of us is a form of toothache. <laughs> you're sitting there, you're thinking, look at me go, I'm at the dentist. Then he injects you in the face. <laughs> ah! You realize every single thought that was in your head is gone. All that clear thinking, every muscle tense, knotted, every sinew straining. Why? Because your stress response has just kicked in. You've become adrenalized, ready for conflict. Whatever you were thinking about before is gone and it's fight or flight. So what does that mean for people who grow up in environments where they're exposed to stress for prolonged periods or explosive acts of neglect or trauma that may render their stress response uh, faulty, shall we say? Stress is a natural human instinct. It's one of the reasons why we've evolved back in the days when we had just climbed down from the trees with our opposable thumbs, dreaming of creating a viable global civilization, the stress response would kick in and help us detect and evade threats, predators, other species, other tribes. We would make the decision right on the point. Am I gonna fight or am I gonna run? In a more modern society, Despite all of the wonderful technology that we see around us, we sometimes confuse that sophistication with our own. And unfortunately, the stress response is rather primitive. So for me, growing up in Pollock in Glasgow, in a chaotic alcoholic home, then it was almost destiny that in my 20s, despite the fact that I had witnessed so many horrific things that had very good intellectual reasons for not picking up a drink, let alone become alcoholic. That is exactly 
what happened. And running parallel to all of that was that deep sense of injustice, that anger. Why should some of you live 20 years longer than me? Pour me a drink. Ultimately, in order for me to find sobriety, I had to do something that people like me are told we should never do. I had to stop for a minute, take a breath, and stop getting angry. Now, there are many reasons legitimately to get angry. The vast inequalities that we see all across society, whether it be in areas of gender, race, class, sexuality, disabilities, whether it be social or political exclusion. So this should not be interpreted by anyone as a lecture from me about how you choose to navigate your own sense of right and wrong and what you think needs to be done. But what I will say is, because of the effect of stress on my cognitive functions, impairing my ability to do everything from negotiate simple human transactions to being extremely threat sensitive and therefore risk averse, right down to how my body decides to store fat the stress response, ubiquitous in every area of my life. What I learned when I got sober was that during my drinking, I had become very sure about what was going on in the world and whose fault it was. Very sure. I had a right to be angry. The things we seen, the things that were done to us, things people in here will only often experience vicariously through a medium like this. But what I also learned was, and it was so excruciating to realize it, was at that point in my life where I was so sure that I knew all about the society, the politics, the economic system, the power dynamics, when I thought I was so sure that I was one of the good guys and that any action I chose to take, whether for retribution or raising awareness, was justified. At that precise moment, so deeply committed to that sense of moral surety, I had no idea I was living in total chaos and emotional dysfunction. My life was unraveling, it was falling apart. I was so fixated on the externals. And I was told, if you're not angry, you're not paying attention. I was paying attention, but not paying attention to everything. And what I also realized was that that harm that had been done to me and the emotional scars that that had left, right at that moment where I think I know everything, I'm transmitting that trauma onto people I love, just as aloof to that as my mother was at times to me. We hear often people will talk about radical, fundamental change. This is the idea that society needs to be reimagined. A good idea, I'm sure you'll all agree. But if we as people advocating radical fundamental change are not willing to submit ourselves to that process, to at times take a break from the anger and put ourselves under the microscope, then that change that we are advocating for is not radical and it is not fundamental. When people like me 
who come out of these communities and become activists begin to talk like this, begin to approach the taboo subject of self-efficacy or personal responsibility. There's a natural instinct that kicks in on behalf of others to become very skeptical. And I know why that is. However, for me, I have to accept that change is about the external as well as the internal. And actually, as an activist, I am far more energetic, far more robust, far more persuasive, with so much emotional wriggle room that I can empathize with people that I disagree with, even just to understand better their line of thought, if it's just to demolish it. So this idea that self-criticism couched within the wider context of very serious and real social injustices and converging inequalities is unhelpful, is objectively wrong. You will hear people say, if you aren't angry, you're not paying attention. And to them, I say, cool, could be that. Or I might just be learning to manage my emotions. Thank you. <laughs>